Hey, good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to show you a little bit about building from the inside out to get your detailing, your shading, a little bit of depth. And uh, I think we're going to do a bull mullet. It's time. Let's paint something cool. <laughs> This is the Triton Mike Yuka Ketchco Collaborative Bull Mullet. It's a little bit different from its cousins, the Bull Shad and the Bull Gill. It's a bit longer. It's 5.5 inches versus a 3.75. These are about a half an ounce. The Bull Gills are three quarters of an ounce. This is 1.5 ounces. They've got saltwater grade hooks and one of the coolest things about these, they are meant for saltwater inshore. You can fish them freshwater. You could probably leave the hooks on, no problem. Um, they do have a little swivel here, a little split ring on the, uh, on the line tie. You can leave it on, take it off, whatever you choose to do with it. The Bull Shad and Bull Gill do not have the split ring on the line tie. One of the coolest features of this, you see that I am turning this all the way around. That is because we will increase hookup ratio if we kind of do this swivel type eyelet. So you can see that move and both of them have this feature where you can just move that completely around. So I really like that. They, they kind of took a page from the playbook of Mike Buca. It's how he does a lot of his resin swim baits. You'll notice on something like this, same thing. And those are built right into the resin. They did the same thing with this plastic, which I'm a huge fan of because it absolutely will increase your hookup ratio. Now these things have been tested, they're tried and true. And today we're going to turn this little guy into a snook. Now in the interest of time preservation, I went ahead and removed the eyes and I've removed the hooks. I took the split ring off of the line tie, but we definitely want to make sure when we clear coat this, we're going to be brushing this on or we might be spraying it with something that we normally don't use. I normally use KBS, but for this purpose might be doing something a little bit different. You can use the KBS Max, it's 2K Clear. Um, I'm probably just gonna use the 2K Clear Max, which is not KBS, it's an auto, um, and in a pinch I'll do that for that because I wanna preserve the integrity of these swivels. I do that on the larger swim baits too because KBS on its face, the regular diamond finish clear, has a tendency to gum this up and you really have to spend a lot of work and time and effort um, ungumming this in order to get these to move freely after they're clear coated. So a 2K spray is probably what we're going to use at the end of this video on this. Um, I may or may not do that on camera, but just so you know, the disclaimer is right up there up front because I use KBS all the time on solid crankbaits. It can be a little bit different with a swim bait. The other thing we're going to do is I've got some 220 grit and I'm going to fold it in half and we're just going to scuff this briefly because I'm going to give this a primer coat. This is not a resin swim bait. This is a solid ABS plastic. Um, it's going to perform beautifully in the water and I can show you some lead vids of the performance in the water and uh, some hookups that Ketchco has allowed me to use, which I appreciate. Thank you, Ketchco. Um, and yeah, it, it's a little bit of a marketability tactic, but you need to know that these things work as well as the bull shad and bull gill. If you're going to invest money in a swim bait, you need to know that it works properly and then it's going to suit your needs for your fishing. Now, can you use this in freshwater? You bet you can. You can either change the hook grade out to a freshwater, like a black nickel, um, or you can leave those on. They're going to hook up regardless of whether it's salt or fresh. They are saltwater graded, so they don't corrode. That's why most of the saltwater hooks that you'll see 
are silver plated or probably not silver silver but they're silver in color and they're plated to protect corrosion because salt water is extremely corrosive so we're just going to scuff this a little bit and then i'm going to give it a primer coat and i am going to be using kbs primer for that um, i have short videos and lots of tutorials on priming and i'm not going to show you the actual priming of this so we are going with a snook i'm going to put that up on the screen for you guys so you can see a little bit better of an image of this a juvenile snook that's about the same size as we're going to be painting i always try to go for something that's going to kind of mimic the size and i think that that portrays it pretty well so let me get some gloves on and i'm going to keep this up top here for me you guys are going to see a version of this and one of the things that you're going to notice is that there's a lot of iridescence in the belly of this so i'm going to be working with some chromes probably some holographic type um, flake or glitter as i go about it and then we're also going to be adding some color shift paint which i think will go a long way on this now you guys can see that i've already primed this i've let it dry um, had some other stuff that i needed to do some emails and get my order worked at so one of the things that you've noticed obviously is that i have been doing less and less of the tutorial videos that's just because the order volume that i have has gone up and it takes a considerable amount of time to put together a video as opposed to just going through you guys have seen the 33 crappies in two hours or one hour whatever i did um, so that's about the pace that i normally work at when i'm not filming so unfortunately, I have not been able to make as many tutorial videos. I've been trying to throw some more shorts in there. I know that's kind of trending. It's not necessarily what you guys want to see, and I understand that. So I am still doing the very best that I can to make sure you guys have good, fresh content, that it's relevant to what we're doing. And this is absolutely relevant because I very there's very few instances where I've had a chance to paint saltwater patterns. I do a few of them. I love doing them. But this is the perfect opportunity. This bait has just dropped. It's a monster. It's a great bait. It's proven. I love a lot of things about this bait. And I actually want to go fish this bait when I finish with it. I'm pretty sure that all of you know how to put on a white base over a primer. Not hard. Um, what little bit of detail from underneath that the primer might have not covered uh, will go away at this point. This was uh, this is the sardine colorway from Ketchco. There are seven. There's a mullet, a dirty mullet, um, a pinfish, herring, mackerel, all the all the meat and potatoes forage fish that you would expect to see in inshore and salt. And very good patterns. They put a lot of time into making them accurate. There's a lot of blue tones in salt water, so like your mackerels and herring and all of that type stuff is the same. And then they've got like the dirty mullet's got some yellow tones in it. There's a lot in the pinfish is like a brownish yellow. So they're pretty much true to what they would look like as a forage fish. Uh, I'm going to show you those colorways at the end of this video so that you can see. If you want to just go ahead and get them from shopcarls.com, you can certainly do that. If you guys are looking at your picture of this juvenile snook up on the screen, you're noticing that there's some shading that's underneath. And one of the things that I always talk about, at least recently, in trying to expand the way I paint and kind of get progressive and better as an artist, is trying to build from the underside out and i did that recently on a i think i did it on an instagram quick reel on on how to build up from the bottom but this is going to do it more as a shading tool and you can see that on this perch on this 10 inch perch dredger that's going to the northeast very soon um, i've got that in there as well and there's some pretty cool stuff that you can do with just black and white that builds depth and shadowing and things like that. And there's three ways, at least three possible stencils that I would use to do that. I would use 
just the edge of a scale. I don't think we want to do that because this is a little bit small for this and this is the smallest stencil that I have. Um, we could do it this way just to put some black dots on there but I think that they're too close together and it would darken it too much and it's a little bit randomized. Randomized for this particular snook is not going to be good because if you notice most of the scales are almost in a parallel line. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go with this stencil. I think the scales are small enough. There's enough uh, line between them so that I'll be able to build these up. And it, I think it closely represents the underscaling that you see in this juvenile snook. So we're going to get some black out, just an opaque black. And you want real low pressure. You don't want to blast anything through your airbrush. So we're going to bring the pressure down to about 15. And we're going to work our way down from just underneath now. Let me take a look at the gill plates. The gill plates are pretty clean. I don't see any scales on them. Some fish have them, some fish don't. Snook doesn't look like it does. So I'm going to be very careful not to get any of this scaling on the gill plate. I'm kind of doing one section at a time. It's okay if there's a few little blank spots, I can go back. Um, but the most important part is to make sure we kind of stay in a line. Doesn't have to be super dark. It just needs to be visible. So you can see we're building up some pretty good background. It looks like it's white and brown and silverish, chromish. But when you really go into it and break down the layers, you see it's a little bit more. So all I'm doing is kind of following, following up here. And I'm going to place the scales on the forehead. Real light. Doesn't have to be dark. Make sure we have everything going in the same direction. Like we do. Flip it. Get this out of the way. Do the same thing here, being very careful not to get those gill plates. model stencil around. Now, again, it does not have to be perfect. It can be dark in some spots, it can be lighter in the other because shading in nature is varied. I think that's probably pretty good. I will uh, some people do the, the tails of these, some people don't. I always like to try and be consistent in my work. So I am going to add just a little bit of scaling to the back of this, just for consistency. And that way, when I add in the paint, it kind of goes with the rest of the scheme. We're pretty much done. Uh, could maybe come back over this and be a little bit darker, but you got to be careful. You don't want a double line. I'd almost rather have a faint impression than a double impression. So yeah, I might maybe just in one 
little area be a little bit darker. But that's it. But before we get the black out of the cup, I'm going to shade the underside of these eyes just a little bit. You can reuse the eyes if you can get them off without ripping them or pulling the holographic film off of the back of the eye. You can reuse them if you don't have anything else that's in the same size. If you do, then my suggestion would be to match the hatch. The snook, at least at what I'm looking at, has got a little bit darker of an eye than just a silver. And I just killed that pattern. Um, come on. Nope. There we go. It's not gonna, there we go. So when I, when I get close up on this, it almost looks like a brown in there, in the eye. It's a lot darker. And then you've got that, that silvery white uh, around the pupil. So I'm gonna try and see if I have anything that matches it. If not, I'm just gonna put the, the eyes that came with it back in. As we come back over this, I've got white back in the cup. And we're just going to fade this into the background a little bit. Not completely. This is an opaque white. It's not transparent. Transparent would probably work. But if we go real light across this, we should be okay. I don't want to cover it. I just want to drop it into the background. Some of you might be asking, what's with the paint on the tail? It is uh, Mike's traditional hair tail, so you'll be able to pull this out when the paint dries. Or if you wanted a different color tail, it'll stay on it. This, this stuff, even if the paint is painted onto the tail, will eventually come up when it hits the water. So nothing to worry yourself doesn't affect swimmability. This is a very stiff hair tail, so you'll be fine. This is um, it's a mirror chrome. It says it's the ultimate mirror chrome. It, it's not, but it's a good mirror chrome for what I'm going to be using. Uh, it kind of turns into silver. It's very difficult to get an absolute chrome when you apply clear coat to anything, at least anything that is resin or plastic. Automotive chrome behaves differently on metal than it does anywhere else and it goes better over black than it does white but we really don't need for it to be chrome here we just need a real good silver so as we come through this I don't want it real hard because chrome is opaque and it will destroy very quickly the background that we want really bad to have on this. I want it heavier in the gill plates than I do in the body. I really don't need a whole lot more after this because I'm going to move the silver. But uh, I got this on Amazon. You guys can get it on Amazon too. I can leave you a link if you want to check it out and use it. Um, not super expensive, but it's not not cheap either. Um, I want to say it's like 10 got 10 bucks for something this size, roughly. I'll have to go back and look at what I paid for it. So I can still see the uh, I can still see the detail behind this, depending on the angle. And that's good. That's what I want to see. Uh, against the light directly, the background disappears, but if you look at it indirectly, then you can still see it. I think that's perfect. I don't want to do any more, so we'll stop there with the chrome. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our browns. And in this photograph, there's some gold properties as well. It almost looks like the saturation's been burned out of whoever took this photograph. So I, I wouldn't read the coloration as gospel, but it's kind of an indicator of where we can go with the pattern. So I'm going to bring a little bit of gold. You know, I'm not, don't even think I want to use the pearlized. I want to use this acrylic metallic. This is a Liquitex 
uh, I do a lot of golds with this. One note to you guys is the more things that you use that are not water-based, the more layers of clear coat you need. And I would add an amendment to that to, to say you might even want to kind of move around and, and try different things like acrylic lacquers, automotive lacquers, um, things that are more purposed towards the automotive industry, like Tamco. There's a lot of stuff out there when you start to play with different types of inks, like alcohol-based ink is a lot different and behaves a lot differently than water-based stuff. There are all kinds of things out there that you can throw through an airbrush, but when you get down to the clear coating aspect of it, it's a whole different ball of wax. So that's just something to keep in mind as you progress in what you use to paint. And it's stuff that I've found out too. Uh, trial and error and fail and, and succeed. So we all learn by making mistakes. At least a lot of us do. For the little bit of gold that I see in the, uh, the gill plates around the cheeks, I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna add them in with this R-Tools stencil. I'm going to try and be specific about where I place it, try and match it up with where you would find it in this picture. And hit both sides there. It's real subtle when you do this. You don't have to go crazy and uh, blow a lot of color onto it. You just, just kind of want to be able to see it. You want to be able to notice that it's there and that it varies from some of the other colors that you're going to see in this pattern. I have a piece of a fin wheel here from Russ Allen. It's going to match up fairly close, close enough to where if we come at this lightly, we can get a gold base to it. I think that should be all right. Metallics and things that are not water-based generally are much thinner. They come out a little bit quicker. So that's also something to be mindful of. When you're shooting them through an airbrush, be mindful of your pressure and be mindful of the thickness of whatever it is that you're using. A lot of people have a tendency to thin their paints I try at all costs not to do that, but some things like this start out pretty thin to begin with. Just going to add in a little bit of gold and I'll come back and use that again. It's not the exact one that you want. I could probably have cut a stencil. Um, but we should be okay without doing that. I'm also going to bring just a little bit of light gold over the head here. There are browns in this, and it's like a reddish brown. I've seen snook. They're yellowish brown, a little bit of red, depending on how many bits of tannin are in the water. fishing them. So I'm just going to bring that gold across the back. Starting to take a little bit more shape. And you can see that this metallic is also fairly translucent. So you get a pretty clear background coming up through that. But it's just background now. It's not prominent like when we put it on, because we did use black. Black is absolute. And it's always very dark when you put it on, no matter what your pressure is. Now that the gold's out, we're going to bring in this Detail Burnt Sienna. It's a wicked paint. And again, don't need a whole lot One thing you want to, some of the wicked paints will splat when you start. 
So I always try to begin my spray here and then work up to the bait. Get the nose. Get that. I'm already running and gunning, so we're going to move through. Um, so a lot of times I'll try and turn the camera off when the compressor kicks in. But since we're already in the middle of doing the back of this, I'm not going to stop. got some wicked detail black magenta that we're gonna as we go further on the back we're just gonna cover that don't know that I'm gonna do a true black on the back of this although I may I know they get real dark towards the very top but I think we can kind of see this as a good outline I might change my mind been known to happen as I go through a pattern. To add the edges to the thin tips. And one thing I want to do is I want to bring where was that? I think I can do it freehand. Just very lightly put a little detail. And then add in just to the back of this. Let's see if I can find something that'll work appropriately. So let's do this. dark there and we'll add a little bit to darken that now one thing if you get paint where you don't want paint and the paint's still wet grab a q-tip lifesavers add just a little bit of reducer and just kind of roll that q-tip out Before I put on the iridescence, take regular black. If you have a steady hand, do it this way. If you don't have a steady hand, lay down the bait after the paint's dry. But I'm going to add just a little bit of detail to the underside of this, just to show where that fin is jointed. Now the lateral line that occurs naturally on this bait where they've put it in is underneath the pectoral fin. Unfortunately, that's not where the snook line is. So it kind of starts up here at the top of the gill plate and works its way down the fish. So this is probably the most tedious part of what you're going to do and it needs to go in before you put your iridescence on. see in the top there's a little break in the top of this at least in the photograph and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side this is the most tedious part of the journey folks now we can't see what the other side of this fish looks like but I would imagine it's fairly similar so we're gonna create that little break here in the top up 
if you notice, the tail in the picture is a reddish brown. And we are going to go true to form and do both sides of the tail in that reddish brown. Yes, this will eventually fade away in the water, but for the first day or so that you use it, first couple of times, you're still going to get that reddish tail. I'm going to start to add the Vallejo color shifters. I've got a pink to gold, and I have a bright gold to brown, which actually turns out kind of green. So on the belly of this, I'm going to add in just a little bit of that pink. Give it that shimmer on the belly. Then we're going to add in some of this gold brown. We're going to bring that a little bit closer up towards the lateral line. I think on the camera you're going to be able to see the green a little easier. Then you can see the pink. I hope you guys can see that. And then for the very back, remember I said I might change my mind, I do want just some genuine black. Very thin. Bring the pressure way, way, way back. Also going to add just a little bit at the tail because if you'll notice on the snook that lateral line continues out just to give a quick recap of what we've done today we started out with a little scuff on this sardine pattern from the bull mullet brand new release from Mike Buca and Ketchco. From that, we took the primer, painted it gray. It's a self-etching primer. It's KBS SEP Fusion. That's the primer I use. I can leave a link in the description below for 15% off. If you guys would like to take advantage of that, you are more than welcome to. I am an affiliated sponsored person through KBS, so I do need to let you know that ahead of time. I trust and believe the product that I use, and I've been using it for years, and I love it. From that point, over top of the primer that was dry, we added a white base coat and then started to put the detail in from the bottom out. I used this stencil from Anarchy Model Stencils UK. And it's just a scale. This is a mini scale, fish scale. And you can see what we were able to do with that pattern from there. The paints I used today a Wicked Jet Black Detail, a Detail Black Magenta from Wicked, a little bit of Pearlized Yellow, we used some Gold from Liquitex, Wicked Detail Burnt Sienna, and then a little bit of Pink Vallejo Color Shifter and Bright Gold Brown, just to give the belly some iridescence and pink that it would not normally have with regular pink just to give the belly some iridescence and color shift that it would not normally have with regular paint. So if you guys can see that in the camera, I have a good bit of top lighting. I'm hoping that you guys can see some of the iridescence in there. Definitely the greens I think are coming through, but the pink on the belly is pretty prominent well. I believe that the greens are coming through on camera for you guys pretty well but the, the pinks are very prominent on the belly. Um, you would be able to see that up close and personal 
if you were fishing this or standing here where I'm standing right now. Definitely a lot of pink in the belly. So that's what we did. I, you can, if you are very proficient with an airbrush like Chris Grout is, you can take the tip off and get a line and get very thin on your lines. Just like that. So I could have done it that way. I chose to do it with a paintbrush. I think the paint is a little bit more thicker and I wanted this line to be very prevalent underneath this iridescence and I think we've been able to achieve that. Almost forgot to mention this chrome. This chrome went on um, over top of the black on the stencil. Just very light, just to give it that, that shimmer, that silver shimmer that you see, and in the cheeks on the gill plates. For these eyes, I don't have anything that is an exact match, but I wanted them a little bit darker than the silver that came with them. I think silver would work, but in sync with the pattern, of this fish, I'm gonna add some fish skulls living eyes. These are 8.5 millimeter, which is, you could maybe do a nine, but these 8.5s are pretty snug. Pretty happy with them. But I'm gonna do, or at least I'm gonna try to do, a little extra detail on this. Wipe that off. Make sure your points are forward. There's not much of a point on a snook's eye on its pupil. They're more round than anything else. But this is not a horrible depiction, but it's still, it's missing something. And that is that whitish line around the pupil. So I've got this Faber-Castell. It is a pit pen artist brush. It is acrylic and India ink. It is waterproof, light fast, and if I can do this right, I'm gonna try and point the camera down to where you guys can see what I'm doing. If I can pull this off, it might look cool or it might look like doo-doo and I'm gonna to have to put new eyes on. We're gonna find out here. Just adding that ring. Around the pupil and I think that looks okay. The big question is, how is it going to look when I clear coat it? Is it going to smudge? Is it going to come out? I've never tried to do this before, but then again, I've never tried to do a snook pattern before. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other eye. Hope you guys can see this. I don't even know if I'm in frame. I guess I should look. Yeah, I'm in frame. you can't find exactly what you're looking for try creating your own you know I have to do it of course I have to do it it's kind of like a trademark almost anymore just make those fins pop paint some pretty little fish <laughs> I'll see you guys next time Cheers.